two burger behemoths battle it out for ground beef supremacy. In one corner, we have the Mac Daddy itself, the towering terror- Whopper versus Big Mac. What? We're doing Whopper versus Big Mac. Oh. This, this is, is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaidi. And for those of you listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, we are officially on video again, the entire we are. thing. Look Everyone, at our faces. Clap it up. So if you want to see our faces, go over to YouTube and watch us. If you are currently watching this on YouTube and you hate the way that our faces look, <gasps> go over to Spotify. Yeah, if we have distractingly beautiful <laughs> faces, which both of us, we know we do, just just, watch, just listen to it. If you would rather either of us just put like brown paper bags over our heads and do the oh, podcast, we no, can do that. No, I don't want to do no, that. No, Nicole, I will do that because that's how much I care I about. I am not famous. You remember when Shia LaBeouf <laughs> used to walk around with that? Uh, Shia LaBeouf did a lot of things. You he could come I mean? on the show. I would love for Shia LaBeouf to be on the show. Yeah. Speaking of Shia LaBeouf, Nicole, do you think he would prefer Big Macs or Whoppers? Um, Boom, I don't segue. think he would want either, actually, but he's not one of the hosts of this podcast, but we are. Should I tell you what mine is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you got? It's Big Mac. I knew you were going to say Big Mac. I knew you were going to say Big Mac because <laughs> I because I am going to say Whopper. And this has actually been a big point why? of contention between us. No, no, I feel like you should explain why you prefer the Big Mac first. Because I would say the Big Mac is the current burger du jour. And the burger du jour, like you could talk about Shake Shack, in and out what a burger, Five Guys, people love all that. But the Big Mac to me is like the most famous burger in world history. I think the Big yeah. Mac, Big Mac is what toppled the USSR. It did? <laughs> like, like in a very roundabout way, I suppose. It, See, does Nicole, this signify capitalism? Glasnost and Perestroika. Yeah, they opened. A, they opened a McDonald's in Moscow in Pushkin Square. Wow. Was that Moscow or St. Peter's? I don't know. In like 1990, and there was like a line of thousands of uh, Soviets That's just incredible. waiting to get their taste of Americana. So I think McDonald's is more iconic. But please tell me about it. Um, I prefer the Big Mac. Well, because it's delicious. I think I think the flavors work together really well. The mm-hmm. sauce is iconic. The little <laughs> the little tiny onions are just delicious. They're like kind of they're kind of perfect. Everything has been made in a lab. <laughs> and I like that about the Big Mac. It's perfectly engineered for a delicious burger experience. I don't miss the tomato at all because I actually don't get my burgers with tomato. No way. Wait, hold on, hold on. A- any prefer, burger stock, you don't get tomato. I it. prefer it with without tomato if unless the tomato is like this thin okay what if i told you that burger king has scientifically engineered tomatoes to not only be as thin as possible nicole but to also be completely white and they have no flavor I like no which is good no <laughs> i see i like my tomatoes to be red and super thin Mm-hmm. Or else I don't need it because it's like a big, wet, squidgy part of the burger that just ruins the experience for me. I love pickles. Pickles are great. I like the sesame seed bun. It's a good bun. And I just think it's I just think it's perfect. But I will say one thing. Even, it's not without its flaws. <laughs> a lot of the times I remove the middle bun because it takes away. What the? Wait. No, 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 no. I'm so sorry, Nicole. I'm sorry. I freaked out. No, Let me ahead. finish. I know. I have a, I'm bad at this. Sometimes. Okay, sometimes I have to remove them because it's, Go ahead. it's too much. It's too. It takes. It's too, so, it takes. I, let me speak. It takes away from from the burgery experience. Of course, it takes away from the burger experience. There is a <laughs> bun where there could have been another piece of meat or yeah. nothing. But the fact that that exists, Nicole, that is endemic to the Big Mac. The entire point of the Big Mac is that it has the third bun. If you say you don't like one thing that is endemic to the Big Mac, you do not like um, Big Macs, Nicole. What I do you like, want? I like the cheese on it. What do you want? The cheese is, it, is good. Is a McDouble with Mac sauce and lettuce. That's what you want. No, I don't. I want it in the Big Mac box. (laughs) This is iconic, too. Look how beautiful the box is. The sesame seed bun, the way that the lettuce is shredded, the sauce, the onions, everything about a Big Mac is iconic. Yeah, even though I can't necessarily enjoy it the way it is, doesn't mean it's not... Beautiful and gorgeous and yum. Smell it. It does smell. It smells really nice. It feels <laughs> it good in the so hand. Good. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. It's like I, smelling a cat. I, I, <laughs> what favorite. do you mean smelling a Big yeah. Mac is like smelling a cat? It's like it's like comfy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got back from South Africa, which I will not shut up about you at will all. Not. Josh but... is like 
full on. He's like in his like era right now of like, I'm an international travel. Ask me anything about South Africa. I know about it. Ask me anything about South Africa. Ask me anything about South Africa. I can, I'll, I'll um, tell you about it. Tell you about it. So what are the roads like? Oh my God. So the roads to South Africa. Funny thing is that pedestrians do not have the right of way. Oh, see, and so literally cars will just like absolutely mow you down. But pedestrians are legally allowed to just stand in the middle of the road and let cars pass you. Um, also, there's zigzag lines that mean that uh, pedestrians will be crossing there. And then there's a street sign that it's an S with a strike through. Mm-hmm. And the joke is growing up that that means no sex on the road, but actually it means like no pedestrian crossing. What does the S stand for? I don't know. Sedestrian. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> no, no, not at all. But but what were we saying? I was saying when I got back, I missed the cat so much that I immediately just grabbed him, shoved him into my face, and breathed in his yeah, essence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And it is similar to a Big Mac. I'll give you that. They're both I, squishy. I can't do that with a Whopper. The smell and also the girth <laughs> of a Whopper. It's so it's so flat and wide. Yes. Wait. Okay. Big okay. Mac, tall, gorgeous. She looks like Miss America. Let me let That's me. Teen USA. Let me, hold on. Let me let me. The, bring Whopper, out the Whopper is Teen USA. Miss Teen USA. I think the most prescient thing that anyone has ever said in the history of the world is that bigger burgers should not be taller. They should be wider. And that is one of the reasons I personally love the Whopper. Let's open it right here. Nicole, have you seen <laughs> have you seen a wider fast food burger in your life? Look at how wide this That's is. It's a frisbee. You could throw it. the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay. So the Big Mac. Two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Correct. That's a fantastic makeup of a burger. It is. Where I think it fails is the middle bun. And I yes. would, we, 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 we both I agree, agree with you. I'm an adult and I can admit whenever things don't add up and things need to be changed and things need aren't as perfect as they seem. But the third bun, one, okay, so McDonald's, right, founded in 1940 um, by the McDonald's brothers in San Bernardino, California, and the reason it really blew up was their speedy service system. Super speedy. And so the entire reason, the raison d'etre of McDonald's was that they had so few menu items they could turn them out as fast as possible mm-hmm. with high volume and choreography, but their burgers were super, super small, right? <laughs> to this, <laughs> Dude, legit, legit, legit. They would like, they were like ballet dancers they were at the like original Vogue McDonald's. They giving you burgers? That's incredible. They were serving at the OG McDonald's. Um, but one of the problems was their burgers are super, super small, right? And they are to this yeah. day. So the patties inside the Big Mac are less than two ounces. I think it's 1.8 ounces. Super tiny. They're super tiny. And so as <laughs> say as Americans grew larger, um, but no, people wanted something more substantial. So 1940, the OG McDonald's is, is created. Yeah. Ray Kroc, uh, as played by Michael Keaton, yes. the founder. Never saw it, but yes. It's a fine movie. He opens the first franchise location in 1955 in Illinois, and that's the thing that really blew him up. 1968 is when a franchisee in Pittsburgh adds the Big Mac to the menu to like feed steel workers who are hungry, Smart. right? And so that's why you get... McDonald's burgers were so small that they couldn't feed the hungry steel workers. But at this point, they're so decentralized due to the franchisee system that they had to start adding new menu items to try and like retrofit the needs of their clientele. So to me, the McDonald's Big Mac is ultimately flawed because it goes against the original McDonald's, you know, ethos of making simple menu items and small petite burgers. That's why they didn't have burger patties big enough to just like fill out a bun. So they're like, oh, two burgers, three buns. That's the only way we can make this bigger. Whereas the Whopper, Nicole, look at this big flat frying saucer. So ugly. Of a quarter pound. Burger King, I love you. Flame broiled ugly, burger. Ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> So for me, the ratios of the Big Mac are already messed up. I think the flavor profile is incredible. <laughs> they're a little off. They're a little off, but they're but it's still delicious. I agree with that. Are entirely. you eating already? I licked a, an old piece of lettuce I... off of my finger, and that's it. <laughs> so I think the flavor profile of a Big Mac, I, I would say, with the special sauce, which is just some combination of mustard, relish, mayonnaise, and spices. There's no mm-hmm. ketchup in McDonald's special sauce. There is no ketchup. Sauce. A lot of people don't. It's paprika, right? Paprika yeah, it's extract, paprika extractive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I prefer that flavor profile, but to me, the middle bun's messed up. The burger patties are too small. There's only one slice of cheese, which is really strange. I don't mind. I love cheese, like capital L, love cheese. I actually think the one slice is perfect. Really? I do. If you get an extra, if you put extra cheese on it, it completely throws it off. And you can do it, but it doesn't. It doesn't do it for me. So you think the Big Mac is perfect because it's like a little bit flawed in the way that like um humans are flawed. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. Cindy Crawford as like a mole. 
You didn't like her mole? No, I don't know. I don't know what Cindy Crawford looks like, but that's she the thing. She has a mole, and yeah. that makes her hotter. Yeah. See, that's the same thing you were saying about the Big the Mac. The middle bun. The extra bun is the mole? <laughs> the extra bun inside the Big Mac is Cindy Crawford's mole. <laughs> Uh, and I, I respect that. Can I tell you something? Please. Everyone in my family has like a cute mole like over here, like around their face. But I didn't get one. Isn't that so Do you upsetting? draw it on? No, I, I used to when I was younger with like a uh, eyeliner pencil and I'd go I out. That. And then it would wipe <laughs> off in the middle of the night. And I'm like, oh, man, it's just a smudge now. That was like when I used Glossier boy brow to fill out my mustache when it was really <laughs> wow. red. Did you not know this? No. Dude, Glossier paid me. you? Had a sticker of it on the back yeah, of the phone? Yeah, I could. Glossier paid me $200. That is not a humble brag. That is just a brag. That's a brag. Right there, right? Um, because I used um, Andrea, my ex's boy brow, to fill out my gross ratty mustache. Awesome. And it worked. And then I tagged Glossier and they were like, hey, can we post this picture? I was like, give me $200 in a sticker. <laughs> and then they did it. And so I'm now a Glossier Polish model. Shout out Glossier. I come back for more sponsorships. Yeah, I want some. Where are you? <laughs> give me some freaking lip gloss. It's nearly a month into the new year and we're realizing it may have been difficult to stick to any resolutions related to eating healthily. So if you found it hard to stick to healthy eating, it's not too late to turn that around. Daily Harvest works directly with farmers so they can send you harvest bowls, smoothies, and more made with organic fruits and vegetables and more of the best ingredients around. Now, I just had their tomato and zucchini minestrone, and it was so, so, so tasty. I'm going to be ordering that one again for sure. And if that's not up your alley, try their artichoke and spinach flatbread or broccoli rice and dill pilaf harvest bowl. And if that's not up your alley, either one picky eater alert, my gosh, don't worry, they got so much more to choose from. Plus, everything stays fresh in my freezer until I'm ready to enjoy it, helping me reduce food waste. Daily Harvest does their absolute best to ensure transparency and integrity when it comes to their ingredients and the humans who grow them. They support farmers who invest in good practices. So if eating well is a goal for 2023, let Daily Harvest support you on that journey. Go to dailyharvest.com slash hot dog to get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash hot dog for up to $40 off your first box. Dailyharvest.com. Slash hot dog. I have two words, Nicole. What? For why the Whopper is way more better than the Big Mac. Can I guess what it is? Mm, yeah. Char broiled. No, flame broiled, dude. Oh, They're flame broiled. <laughs> Char broiled is the habit. Oh, sorry. Oh, Thank I'm you. Sorry. Uh, maybe I... Carl's Jr. used the term char broiled, too. Shame on me. But shame, no, no, no. Shame. So, uh, so <laughs> But for real, th- that's the reason I love the Whopper more than the Big Mac. It's because the Big Mac, you get these tiny little beef disc patties <laughs> that are uh, griddle cooked, right? They're almost like griddle steam the McDonald's. Um, I think they're thrown in a steamer. <laughs> well, yeah, they're they're are they like griddled and then they're, held in a crap. drawer? They're yeah, crap. they're in a, they're crap. They're they're, crap. they're flavorless gray beef discs, which is, which is like perfectly fine for a fast food yeah, hamburger, yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Burger King, I was about to say it's a fresh beef it's patty. Not. It's not. No, it's it's a frozen puck. That's but it is thrown on live fire. Can smell I look it, at it? it I want to look at. I'm gonna smell it and I'm gonna look, look for at the it. lines on the burger. It doesn't smell good. So Burger King founded 1955. <laughs> Only on one side. No, Josh. Josh, what? look at these. You call this Those are grilled. Like, smell it. Smell it. You can look smell the this. grill. Look, look at this. Look at this. There's no lines. Mean? Oh, God. It smells so Josh, good. Josh, there's no lines on this No, I know, burger. but there's lines. Okay, can I tell you why? No, hold on. Camera. Camera. Zoom in. Camera operator. There's zoom no in. zoom in on the camera. Check this out, though. Okay, so there's lines on one side of the burger, right? So that's from the flame, the flame broiled nature of it. There's no lines on the other side, and I'll tell you why. Because, so check out this, this, this little nugget of history. 1955, Burger King was founded in Jacksonville, Florida. It was originally called Insta Burger King. I did not know that. And they invented something called, like, the Insta Broiler. And so what it was, it was a flame broiler, which is to say a, a grill, like, okay. live fire grates. Um, and it was supposed to, like, broil, flame broil both sides at okay. the same time. So it would get, like, you know, heat on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, and they would also toast the buns on that. And it was a whole thing. That's what they, like, you know, hooked their wagon to. Sounds good. Turns out just, like, didn't work at all. Oh. <laughs> and literally, like, after, like, two years, the franchisees who started expanding it just literally took a hatchet to the machine mm-hmm. to kill it. And then they started uh, flame broiling it instead, which is to say they, like, grill it on one side. And then I don't know if the other side is just cooked with ambient heat, but there's not a single grill mark on there. Not a single. But that's what I love about the Whopper. You do get that little element of flame grilled taste. The beef tastes like something. And then... <sighs> It may not have the special sauce, and or I think cheese my, or cheese or cheese. You can add cheese for like forty nine cents. You can, whatever. but you, no, I don't. No, no, no. I don't. You can't. I don't. And I'm not saying that you I shouldn't. do. I don't. I don't need cheese on my burger, and that is a controversial statement in and of itself. But Nicole, I am incredibly brave. 
<laughs> for you, saying this. You mean to tell me you'd rather eat a burger than a cheeseburger if both of them were in front of you? Uh, if one is a Whopper and one's a Big Mac, yeah. Lies. Nicole, look at this. Look at the cross section of this Whopper. Look <laughs> at the mouth. So disappointing. No, it's beautiful. It's flat. It should be flat. Are you eating it? I don't know what we were allowed to eat. Yeah. Okay. I, we have two. Okay. Nicole, take a bite of the Whopper. <laughs> tell me you don't taste the flame broiled nature of that beef. I do. Nicole, well, that doesn't mean it's good. Tell me the flame broiled nature of that beef does not make you feel something inside and does not make you feel something deeply mm. American. Hey, eat this. <laughs> To be clear, I am just hungry. I have not eaten lunch. I ate some scraps and a pistachio. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, which one tastes better to you? Honestly, honestly, honestly. <laughs> I was going to grab a napkin, but no. Welcome to the good mythical mukbang. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man, are Big Macs better? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Very clearly. Now, okay, let me take another bite of the Whopper <laughs> because now I'm starting to realize I'm just a hypocrite. Wait, wait, Josh. I, I, God, no, hold on. Wait, which McDonald's did we go to? The closest. I can't give you an exact location. People are going to No, no, just say we closest weren't. and second closest because there's two McDonald's. Then there's third closest that's by the supercuts that I go to. <laughs> closest. You know what the closest one? The closest one? Did, do they have new management? <laughs> Highly possible. I don't work because there. Because this is a well-constructed big... I I've know gotten, it is. Because the second closest one normally does much better work. And the third closest okay. one is just convenient if you're already getting a haircut at supercuts. Okay. <laughs> I'm just shocked that they were able to do that because that is probably one of the best Big Macs ever eaten. This is the one where the guy got stabbed. <laughs> this Burger King is the one where the guy got stabbed for some reason. I have a great no. idea, Go Josh. Ahead. While you're while you're munching away over there, I will say the meat tastes better on the mm-hmm. Whopper. But as a cohesive burger, it's Big Mac all the way. Now listen, Josh, how about this? Whenever Smell, I, smell my meat. S- Nicole, smell my meat. I've smelled it. I'd like you to smell I've the meat. It. You don't have to. I'm holding my okay. breath. <laughs> go ahead. What if we, let's just say, one day you're like, I want to go to Burger King. I'm like, I want to go to McDonald's. We yeah. get both. Uh-huh. We go to the kitchen. We get rid of the patties from the McDonald's one. Yeah, yeah. And then we cut the flame, The I'm sorry, chai riled whopper <laughs> ones. And then we put them on this because I think that would taste really good. I agree with you. What I think we should do right now is break down layer for layer which one wins and keep score. Let's do it. I do agree with you, though, that I, the sauce McDonald's is definitely best. But no, no, let's go layer by layer. Okay, okay. let's go bun. Which one wins? But okay. three, you admitted that the middle bun shouldn't be there. I okay. have to eat each bun. <laughs> Just tearing these apart. Which bun tastes better? Whopper bun. Whopper bun's better, right? Yeah. Softer, plusher. It's also wider. I like that. It's a bigger hamburger. It doesn't Josh build. Likes it I love wide burgers. I don't he love thick wide. capital C burgers. I like them flat and wide. Pancake. <laughs> I like my burgers like I like my never mind. Okay, so bun goes to the whopper. Yeah. Condiment. We have a hot mayonnaise and ketchup. <laughs> no. Nicole, they preheat the mayonnaise to exactly 140 degrees in the whopper. Okay, McDonald's for condiments. Easily McDonald's ones on condiment. Yeah. <laughs> cheese? No, right. cheese is part of condiment. McDonald's already No, won that. cheese is not a condiment. It's a part of the burger experience. But it's not part of the... You need to. I think you need to lump cheese in with condiment. Okay, I'll give you that one. Thank you. Okay, okay so burger... McDonald's is better. McDonald's wins on condiment. Yes. Produce. 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 You got the thick white onion. Horrible. You have the... I mentioned the white tomatoes. Look, this Those is 80% white. Those well, are pretty Well, the outside's red. red, but look at the inside. Wow. Right? Gorgeous. The whitest tomato possible. They got thick, chunky iceberg lettuce. They got the white tomato, and they have uh, crinkle-cut pickles, very wide. Wow, I can't believe the Whopper has all of those things thick on it. Thick white onions. <laughs> I don't like that. Versus, shreddice. McDonald's does have the best pickles in the game. Great pickles. Love the shreddis. Love the shreddis. I know that the onions are rehydrated, correct? So they are minced, they are dehydrated, then rehydrated. Kind of awesome. And they are awesome. good. They are kind awesome. Kind of awesome. Yeah. What else is on here? That's it. Uh, Yeah, I think... I would go Big Mac. I would edge Big Mac. On... I too would go with Big Mac. I prefer shredders on a burger. I do as well. I uh, the minced onions I think are better. Eh, the the raw onion and the flame broiledness kind of goes well, goes well. But it was the first thing I tasted. The onion. The onion was the first thing I tasted. And, and... you loved it. No. Yeah, they're pretty snake. Oh, These Burger are King. Smelly onions. Yeah, Burger King. Here's a fun fact about Burger King. They actually genetically modified stank onions. <laughs> no, they have, no, this is true. Are you to for get, real? No, I'm kidding. But no. <laughs> the onions in a Whopper are so stank, though, that I told you this a while ago. When I was a kid, I used to take the onions out of my Whopper because they had a 99 cent Whopper deal, and wow. I would stuff them into like the center console of the back seat. 
and I hid them there because I was so afraid of my mom for the, the normal reasons <laughs> yeah. uh, that I didn't want to be difficult and order no onions. And so I thought my way of getting you away put with it. In the center console, and then they rotted, and they brought <gasps> rats. And then you got rats in your car. Yeah, and <laughs> That's then it like unique. and then it like finally came out that oh, I'd been stashing months worth of ninety nine cent Whopper onions in the car, and then I got in trouble. Have you ever thought? Okay, th- think about this. You know the ra- the wrapper. Why did you just put the onions in the wrapper? Because <sighs> I didn't want to admit that I was too afraid of my mom to admit order to no onions. What to my mom, mean? because like if she saw the rapper, Nicole, I don't know why kids do the things she that they do. She saw the rapper, she wouldn't see the I rapper. You crinkled the know. rapper and threw it away. I was a child. I was like you five were. years old and I was stupid. And yeah. also I was five years old eating whole whoppers for a meal, <laughs> which makes sense. That's a large hamburger for a child. Where were we? We okay. <laughs> Bun McDonald's. Can I go on a tangent? Let's no, go. Bun Whopper. Bun <laughs> Bun Whopper. Condiment McDonald's. Pro- produce McDonald's. You got mayonnaise on your And now we i was I'm covered in, in mayonnaise and schleem. And then now we're just on meat. I Come did on. like the Whopper meat. The Whopper meat works. Yeah. So this is now two for two. Yes. So they're tied as far as structural things go. If you are to order, hmm, I'm trying to think if I were having a craving for a burger burger. Yeah, we got to eat some fries. I have to eat a French fry to mull this over. Pal Do you saying? think that the flaws of a Big Mac, because I think a Big Mac to me has a higher, a higher ceiling, but also a lower floor. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I, what I'm saying is if a Big Mac is constructed properly with the right amount of sauce, the beef is at the right temperature mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and it's not all shaken around the box, I think it is a better burger and a better eating experience than the Whopper. However, I've had a lot of messed up Big Macs, Nicole, that are sliding around all willy-nilly out there, hmm. and I think this is too, You care too much. This is too complicated. You care too much. You're too invested. This is your problem. You care too much about. You're getting a fast food burger, Josh. What about? I care what are you about the. you at Eleven Madison Park. Whatever no, but I'm called. saying I care deeply about fast food burgers, and I think people really underestimate how much care and time and research and science goes into fast food burgers. Right? This stuff doesn't spring up from a vacuum. You know, Big Macs, by the way, totally plagiarized. It was plagiarized from uh, from Big Boy. Because they Bob's had their Big Boy? Bob's Big Boy, yeah, they oh. were a, a hard charging chain, and, and the franchisee from McDonald's even admitted that. So, like, one, this is an act of Josh, intellectual property theft, and I don't support excuse that. Excuse me, the we steal Nicole's. all the time from other creators on no, our sh- YouTube don't channel. Say that. No, we're <laughs> we are the only original <laughs> cooking show, and the fact that there are no less than five high profile YouTube cooking shows that have a concept <laughs> called "Can I make this faster than delivery?" proves that everyone else is also very original, and none of us ever copy each other. Never. Never. I'm sorry, what were you getting? <laughs> I'm starting to think that the Big Mac's just better here. Can um, I tell you why? Yeah. It's just in a, it's it's in a better, easier, enjoyable package. It just works better. Josh, this bird is I know, I'm gonna eat my whopper. No, I know the, bird, the whopper's falling apart. And and that's like, also like your theory about it being better. This is too wide of a hamburger. Yeah, it's too um, wide. Now that I'm looking at it, it's because yeah. here's the thing: you can't like hold it without it drooping. Yeah, and then, see, like it's it, the way that it's con- like see, like the Big Mac is it's perfect. Because uh, one of the one of my arguments was going to be that the third bun makes it sort of like too tall, but it's not. It's, it's not a very too tall. ergonomic burger. It is not too tall. It, uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Josh, I'm, we promised we would be like 30 percent less gross in 2023, and I feel uh, like I'm breaking that. I didn't make any promises, <laughs> and I'm not gross. I think that. The Big Mac is deceptively ergonomic. I think some of the ratios don't make sense, but I think if there's enough of that sauce, I think you're really getting a fantastic flavor profile, right? Really, yeah. And I think even though the beef on the Whopper is a lot better, if you are in if you are <laughs> if you are like worried about the quality of your beef, you ha- you simply have to pay more than four dollars for it, right? How much is a Big Mac? I what's a Big Mac now? Like four twenty nine? Oh, also do you know about the Big Mac index? Six twenty nine. Just for the sandwich. Just for the sandwich. Three ninety nine. No way. No I, think way. It's, I think it's adjusted for um Inflation? for well, it's like regional. Like it'll be more expensive in high cost of living areas. It's not standardized across uh, the U.S. What the heck? I believe that to be true. But also, yeah, California is like five dollars in yeah. America, dude. Where's yeah, the three dollars? Yeah. Let me move. Well, there. you've heard about the Big Mac uh, index, right? I'm sorry. How? Okay, so the Big Mac index, it is not actually scientific. It's similar to the Waffle House index for how strong a hurricane is. Oh, interesting. Okay. They'll judge how strong a hurricane is by what percentage of Waffle Houses have closed their doors. Oh, my Cause God. Because they're like the only thing that doesn't close ever. Interesting. Uh, so the Big Mac index is a, an international economic index signifying the strength of that currency against the U.S. dollar. 
So it's basically like how normal, how normally is our currency currently acting? And so like Iceland, for instance, when they went through their financial crash, um, there were only like two McDonald's's and a Big Mac was like $40 or something. And people are like, well, Iceland's in for a crash. I'm not an economist, so like I'm not explaining this properly, but that's the what general gist What does that have to do with which burger's better? What that has to do <laughs> with it is that there's no Whopper index, Nicole. The Big Mac, to me, I think <laughs> there is wisdom in crowds, and the Big Mac is iconic for a reason. The funny thing yeah. is, right, they both like Whopper, big, Big Mac, big, even though I think the Big Mac does not atone for the original sin and McDonald's burgers being too small – I think that there's sort of a beautiful um what's that what's that word? What's the body roll? I don't it? know. Redemption. There's a beautiful redemption okay. arc for like the franchisee in 1968 in Pittsburgh trying to feed people a bigger burger, trying to compete with the whoppers of the world that were threatening to pass them by hmm. and just shuffling it like a deck of cards and slapping on a special sauce on there. I think you know, creating the myth around it. I think it's a really beautiful, well constructed food. I do. I agree. The Whopper doesn't hold a candle to it. Do I wish that the beef had more flavor, that maybe it was a little bigger, that you could get sure. some of that char grill on it? Sure, but... I, I, the person who loves Big Macs, who was who was vying for Big Macs, doesn't like the middle bun, the middle bread bun in there. I can admit that the Big Mac is flawed, but there's beauty in flaws, especially <laughs> in burgers, man. You should draw a little mole on your face. Can you draw a mole? Face? Yeah, but I'm gonna do it with special sauce. From the no, thing no, that, I want. Oh, you're gonna break out. You're gonna have such a bad rash. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Let's talk about when you're at your best. Maybe it's when you're hanging out with friends and family, crushing that video game's final boss, or maybe just walking your cats around the neighborhood in a stroller. We've all been there. But sometimes life gets you bogged down, and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. BetterHelp's online counseling and therapy services are provided through web-based interaction as well as phone and text communication, so it's super easy to use. And you can choose what type of therapy you want. Individual for you, couples for you and your partner, or teen for your child. Therapy can be beneficial in so many ways. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it isn't just for those who have experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash hot dog today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash hot dog. All right, Nicole, you've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the internet. It's time for a segment we call Opinions Are Like Casseroles. What did you say God, with Nicole, me? Nicole, you are a natural soloist. <sighs> it's so true. But hey, before we get into opinions like casseroles, go check out Spork.com for all of your grocery haul needs. They're out there ranking the best of the best foods. They got a best burger ranking complete with best oh, buns, awesome. best condiments. I weighed in on the best ketchup out there. You did? Well, and, what was it? And my opinion might shock you. Go to Spork.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's listen to our first voicemail. Let's do it. I have a bit of the bubble guts from that Whopper that we ate. I how, know you do. How old was it? I got it at, I got it 15 minutes before. No, that's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. It tasted wet aged. Oh, it's <laughs> raining out. <laughs> a little bit of moisture gets in the bag and kind of like hydrates it from the outside. That's good. I'm thirsty. Yeah. Hey, Nicole, cheers. Back to YouTube. I what guess. time? Hey, guys. Uh, this is Michael. Uh, I live in uh, New York City, uh, Harlem specifically. And. Mm. Y'all talked about a lot of burger opinions. Talked about either sure. smash burgers or those big fat, like inch and a half Gordon Ramsay style mm -hmm. burgers. Uh, like which one's the best? But the best burger isn't a burger; it's a chopped cheese. I knew he was going to uh, say chopped like cheese. Five blocks from the home, the OG chopped cheese house here in Harlem, and what is it, it is the is best is it burger. Hodges? It's like flat on a hero. You have the cheese; it's all kind of gooey and melted inside. It's the best burger experience you gotta wrap it in the foil let it sit there for like a minute because mm -hmm. the all the like beef crumbles knows. and american cheese really steaming in the in the bread 
and then you wrap it up and it's just all kind of like a little wet and uh, steamed and hot inside. You so had me at a little burger, wet and hot inside. Cheese. Go, go to Haji's when you come to New York. You said Haji's. You'll be amazed. Do you know what a Haji is? Uh, Can a Haji, you guess? I, I believe I do know what a Haji what is. is. A Haji is one who has made the pilgrimage to Mecca. Yeah. Scrabble yeah, word, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry Sounds that I took good. your thunder out, but no. No, no, you did it. Uh, the Chopped Cheese is an American institution, and I've never I, had it. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say that I've never had if I had ones from the Chopped Cheese truck in Los Angeles, and the dude is from Brooklyn, mm-hmm. um, so I believe that he makes a proper version. But there's nothing like going to Haji's, which a lot of people claim is the original awesome. um, in New York. So a chopped cheese for people who don't know, um, it's offensive to say it's like a Philly cheesesteak, but, but I'm going to say that. It's like a Philly cheesesteak, but it's made with ground beef. You chop up the ground beef. Mm -hmm. You add the cheese on top of that and kind of mix it in a little bit so it melts. You put that in a a hero roll, a hoagie roll, whatever you want to call it, and then lettuce, tomato, whatever sauces, condiments you want. Wrap it up. Let it steam. It is a bodega staple, and we ain't got bodegas in California. We have what we call liquor stores, and sometimes they got a little hot dog roller. And sometimes there's a deli in them, but mostly not. Sometimes there's delis. I like the ones with delis. There's a liquor store in Burbank that has fi- uh, just like a fish and chip shop in it. It's called like Willie's Fish and really? Chips. Really good. Um, I go to Vendom's. Vendom's has a real good deli. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vendom's is my favorite. Do you think the chopped cheese could, could qualify as the best burger? Well, I've never had one, but <laughs> from from the the explanation, it sounds perfect. Does it, though? <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Ch- chopped cheese, chopped cheese yeah, is absolutely it great. it sounds great, but again... Since I've never tasted it, I can't really be a good judge of it. So, uh, the idea okay. sounds great, but I can't give an answer. I can lie and say <laughs> yeah, or I can lie and say no, but I don't have an answer. Even conceptually, like uh, a chopped cheese is a different eating experience than a burger. I wouldn't call a chopped cheese a burger. A chopped cheese to me, like it's a it's a sandwich, it's a hoagie, right? Um, in the same way that a Philly cheesesteak is to me, they're they're similar. I know they're their Which own is beasts. I am personally a massive Philly cheesesteak fan. Also, if you want the lettuce tomato, you can get a Philly cheesesteak hoagie is what they call it, which I find it delightful. I probably wouldn't order it in Philly because I don't know the politics of all that. You know what I mean? You (laughs) go to places. Yeah, I think so. You know, but if I go, go birds, then they have to respond with go birds. (laughs) Um, But the chopped cheese, I don't think it qualifies as a burger because it's it's chopped up. It's not in a round bun, et cetera. And Nicole, do you know in South Africa? I recently went to South Africa, Maggie. Everybody look at me. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Anything on a round bun is called a burger. Like chicken burger. Yeah, they call well, it chicken burgers. They were never part of the Commonwealth, right? Um, they're Dutch. They're Dutch right? No, no, no. They, were, they, are, they are currently part of the Commonwealth. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Saying. So after the the Boer, the Anglo-Boer War, there was in 1910, it's called reconciliation, and they kind of <laughs> British stepped out, but it was agreed upon. Did you know that I went to South Africa recently? Josh, of course. Everybody knows. Yeah, boy. All right. <laughs> Next opinion. Oh my gosh, I was not expecting that uh, voice mail right Expect off the bat. The that, unexpected. But, uh, my hot food take is definitely going to be that I love carrots in ketchup, and don't you yeah. dare judge <laughs> my uh, my decision right there. Let me tell you why. I'll tell you why because as a kid, uh, my parents were were always like, "You need to eat your vegetables." I'm like, "You know what? I don't like vegetables. I'm a kid. I hate vegetables." <laughs> and they're like, "You know what? You need to eat these carrots. They're good for your eyes." So I'm like, "All right." I'll, I will eat these carrots, but I need ketchup because I love ketchup. At the time, I put ketchup on everything. You know, I was one of those kids that you're one I of those ketchup kids. on everything, mm-hmm. and yeah. so I did. And uh, when I tried ketchup on carrots, I found out it was a very delicious thing. And uh, I think you would too if you tried it. So I'll go ahead and give it a try, and you're welcome for ketchup with carrots. That could have been a th- Three second opinion, but it was more like a forty five second. <laughs> but I loved opinion. it. He had but such a beautiful sing song voice. There's a little bit of Mitch Hedberg in there when he was I on liked Uppers. It. Yeah. Oh well, I don't. You know. can tell what Mitch Hedberg was on based on his could delivery. Could you? I could yeah. never tell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could tell the family of, not the specific oh, substance. That's that's good. Ke- uh, <laughs> ketchup and carrots. Uh, well, let me tell you, my favorite way to eat carrots is with lime juice and salt. Oh, you're talking raw carrots, lime raw juice carrots. and salt. Are they talking about cooked? I well, no. I'm just. I was asking you about your own opinion. You're, yeah, it's raw. raw. <laughs> Weird lime juice salt. Why? This seems very plain. I don't know. It's you don't do peanut butter. Plain. You don't it's do delicious ranch dressing. Yeah, of course I might do ranch, but lime. So you totally coat it in like heavy lime juice, and then just like handfuls of salt. I love that. I don't eat a lot of raw carrots. If I do, I will do a. You don't a, eat baby carrot. 
<laughs> no, I, I like like a nice herbaceous, creamy dip, a ranch or ranch adjacent, what? like a green goddess what dressing. If I bring baby maybe a piece of stew or something. Shut you know, up. You dip it in. Oh my God, Nicole, I had this great crudite. <laughs> a piece of stew? I with had your baby this carrots? lovely baby carrot crudite at a fancy French restaurant and they had a fromage blanc dipping sauce. That's cool. Ugh, oh, yum. Cool. I put ketchup on all my vegetables at home because <laughs> I'm a child. Because. If I don't have time to like make a I, sauce or a devoted like vegetable dish and it's just like a weeknight, you got to steam some vegetables, roast some vegetables. I still want to eat it with some sort of sauce and ketchup yeah. just gets you there. That's fine. That makes sense to me. But like baby carrots. Yeah, what, what are, you, are you saying baby carrots like that? I is love this baby a, carrots. Was it a vine? Is this one of the vines that only you know about and that I don't know about because I didn't have vine? No, I just love baby carrots. <laughs> They're fun. They're, They're fun. regular carrots just whittled down. I dip everything in ketchup. Ketchup is a very fancy like sauce, right? It's got umami, salt, acid, sweet. Ketchup's the perfect sauce. Dip anything and everything in ketchup. It's I like beautiful. It. I like ketchup and I like carrots. In South Africa, they call it tomato sauce. I don't care at all. Next opinion, please. Is everything gonna be related to South Africa? In South Africa, they call ah! these they call these chips. Really? <laughs> but then some people call them fries, and I couldn't get an answer as to why. Hi, Josh and Nicole. Um, so I've been in recovery from an eating disorder for like seven years now. Mazel tov. Um, but I wish I had started listening to your podcast sooner because within the past few months, I've made so much like progress just mentally with my relationship with food like hearing you guys talk about food in such a an open and humorous and like I don't even know how to describe it but like just the other day I ordered french fries from Wendy's hey, for cheers. the first time ever I've never ordered food from like a fast food restaurant and I was so proud of myself and I don't think I would have been able to done to do it without you so um yeah thank you so much for just sharing your your silly food opinions and I'm gonna cry. Um, I'm gonna cry. talking about food in such a a nice way. Um, I'm, yeah. gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Eating my friends. Friends. Oh, um, no, I mean one. I'm not a licensed medical health professional yet. No. I could be. We don't know what I'm capable of. Um, but two, like that is. It's not an unconscious thing that we talk about food the way that we do, right? You're right. It's not like deliberate and calculated, but it is like our shared values that we believe in. Of right? course. Um, one, everyone's real messed up in the head, right? Yeah. And and everybody has their cultural differences, their reasons for doing things that they do, which is why we try not to speak about food in the language of shame. Sometimes we do it very jokingly, like yelling at somebody for dipping carrots and ketchup. Yeah. But I don't believe in using the, the terms shame around food. I don't believe in calling foods weird in that way because everybody has such a deeply personal relationship with it and it's something that there's all these like food is just fuel for your body people and it's like no no it's not food is something it's about shared connection yeah. it's about joy it's about love it's about passing on cultural traditions for thousands upon thousands of years yeah. it's awesome it should be celebrated um, and I understand a lot of people have messed up relationships with food uh, us included us we've yeah. talked about this of course of course um, but hopefully yeah are the way that we speak about it and trying to sort of take that power that negative power that has a way yeah hopefully it helps some people and that's rad thank you so much for telling us that yeah congratulations and keep up the good work we're very proud of you and call us again we love to hear your voice you went wendy's fries though for the first time <laughs> hey! hold on no i'm hey! just saying like they hey! they've gotten better but... they're pretty good dipping a peanut butter sandwich and milk is the only way to eat peanut butter sandwiches <laughs> Short and sweet. I love that. <laughs> and I love store-bought commodity bread soaked in milk. Mm, you know what I like to do? Mm. So when there's just a little bit of milk in the carton left, <laughs> I just pull out the damn carton and I drink from the spout. Oh, yeah. Because it's just my milk. I just, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't do that like with your – because you just live with your husband. I do. You wouldn't drink the carton if he's... So the way that my milk is set up is <laughs> David drinks whole milk. Oh, okay. And I am a lactose intolerant lady, mm -hmm. so I have either oat or almond or hemp. He hates lactose-free milk, doesn't understand the concept of lactose-free, even though I love lactose-free milk. He's like, no! So I kind of just, you know, pop up in the top of my oat milk and I just, you know, go to town. I like lactate. It's sweeter. I love lactate. Lactate's sweeter. Um, dip in the sandwich and there is a... A, a child's book series called not the 
Yeah, it was the boxcar children. If you give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> no, the you know the boxcar children? No, what's that? They, okay, so you know like the Hardy Boys, right? They yes. like solved mysteries. Um, uh, the boxcar children was that, except they were homeless and they lived in a <laughs> in an empty train car. <laughs> And so I really connected with them, you know, rough upbringing like that. And they would solve mysteries. But their no. treat was they would like steal bread. They would like steal stale bread. <clears throat> French fries. I'm so sorry. But like as a treat, they would like steal stale bread and they would soak it in milk and they would eat it. And so I started doing that when I was a little poor kid um, eating soaked bread and milk. And so one of my comfort foods is um, I, I kind of prefer almond milk now because I'm a coastal elite, but I will make like a nut butter sandwich on like one of that, like the honey wheat bread from our wheat and I'll dip that in milk and it'll remind me of the boxcar children. That's so sad. That book was for kids? Oh, there was like hundreds of boxcar children books. Yeah, they would like solve oh, mysteries. They'd like I'm take down sad. drug kingpins, but they were definitely homeless. How, what age? Yeah, like young, young. But I think they were like led by like young teenagers. Um, but then the youngest, I mean, must have been seven, eight years old. The what state, age did you read it? The state didn't step in what and save age these kids. Did you read where, it? where was the adoption agency? Where were social were services? They and you know, sister? but at the same time, it's like with how messed up were the they social services are. It's like were they not better off, Nicole, just like by themselves, taking care itch. of each other? <laughs> you know. Oh, okay. Henry is 14, and then the youngest, Benny, is six. Yeah, they, they're all siblings. They're orphans, and Maggie, they live in a box. Were their, were their parents <laughs> killed? Were they murdered in the boxcar children? Uh, if they anybody... said they're orphans. They said they're orphans. Also, how old are they today, Maggie? Are they <laughs> are they real? Search boxcar children real question mark. Um, <laughs> I really hope not. Uh, the I like mother that. is dead. Hardy boys is... were posh. Anybody could solve a mystery if their parents are alive. Wait, were their parents murdered in the boxcar children? <laughs> their mother's dead. Their father was very drunk. He could hardly walk up. Oh, my God. This is the worst book for kids It to taught read. me self-esteem. The boxcar <laughs> children are the it reason did? that I am the way I am today. Is that true? 100%. Every kid should read the book. 100%. 100%. <laughs> you know what I read a lot as a kid? Uh, Amelia Bedelia books. Ah, she was soft. <laughs> Amelia Bedelia never could have handled the crushing emptiness of uh, homelessness and also solving I'm murders. Amelia Bedelia. <laughs> I uh. <read> boxcar <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was like the boxcar children. I was reading like uh, Michael Crichton books, <laughs> pretending like I understood quantum theory. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Not sad crying. I'm like laughing crying. Yeah, boxcar uh, children. Video conti- Sorry, this is on video now. I know. Isn't that the beauty of it? <laughs> uh, if we could zoom in on Nicole's crying face right now, because that to me is a testimonial of how delightful we are. <laughs> you know? Please don't zoom in. I didn't do my eyebrows. All right, on that note, thank you all for listening to A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. (laughs) If you want to hear more from us in the Mythical Kitchen, we got new videos out every Wednesday. Videos, I know the videos are out on like a Friday. And then the audio podcast is out on a Wednesday. And then I take, and then I do my semi-weekly chiropractor appointments on Mondays. Just in case anybody (laughs) was knowing, I have a... He's like more of like a sports physio, but like it's it's from a I've chiropractor. I've been to him once. Oh, you went to see, to see Dr. Sean? Yeah. Oh, we love him. Did okay. you like him? He was okay. I only went once. Mm. Uh, if you want to be featured on Opinions or like Casseroles, you can hit us up on Twitter at Myth- Mythical Chef. That's this guy. Or and Henry Zada, me, um, on Twitter. And then um, use the hashtag Opinion Casserole. And then oh. also you can call us. <laughs> Why are you moving so Oh, because I was about to say something else, but keep okay, going. You can call us at 833-DOGPOD1 and leave a really nice opinion. Did you know that Dr. Sean's cousin started a popular um, meme account on Instagram? Can I guess which one it is? Yeah. I know which one it is. Which one? I know which one it is. What? what say it. I know, I know the one. I don't think you do. I do. It's called like, <laughs> it's called like dog fart or something. It's like it's like not like... Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's, not, not, it's not memes by Joe? Oh, uh, it might be that one. Okay, yeah. I, know. I know, Anyways, I know. Uh, for, for more Mythical Kitchen, check us out on YouTube. We launch new videos every week. Uh, we'll see you all next time. And again, if you don't like the video, um, keep it to yourself. <laughs>